I'm back, and I'm sitting here with another Husker legend, none other than Julius Jackson. Julius, it's been a long time, man. Uh, since I saw you live, I mean, we've been in contact, but uh, how you been? What you up to? What what what's Julius Jackson doing these days after being two-time national champ or one? Two. Okay, two-time national champ. You came in '95. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So you got in on some greatness. Yep. And you were here through some things. So what are you life. doing? Right. What are you doing these days? And then we'll get into a little bit of football. Well, nowadays I run G Tech Marketing. Um, as some people have already been saying, you know, we do resume revisions, we do bios, we work with corporations. So that's kind of what I'm into now. Where where can they? If somebody wants to use your services as far as Jujack Marketing, where can they reach you? JujackMarketing.com. Okay, JujackMarketing.com. So, so now that I got you here, I know one of the things I call myself a Husker historian. So <laughs> I'm just, you know, and I was asking you earlier kind of about your career at Nebraska. Right, right. You was here for two national championships, and then, you know, Coach Osborne retired. Not that it was a big difference, but what was some of the differences between – you know, uh, uh, Coach Solich and Coach Osborne initially. Initially, there was a change of the coach and style. You know, Osborne was very quiet. He didn't have to look at you, and you knew if he did it right or wrong. Solich was in your face yelling. So right off the back, it was like almost a culture shock. So that was a difference. Now, nice, nice. Now, when you look at Nebraska football today versus – I don't even want to verse it. What's your description of Nebraska football today? Uh, <laughs> I know I got you on the spot, but I mean, at the end of the day, if, well, if I had it, to... It's, it's hard to... You know, when I came in, the Class of 95, y'all had just won the championship. So it was already established, like, the leadership. You know, so we were... We had leadership ahead of us to teach us you know, what it took to get to that level. And unfortunately, the crew now, they don't have anybody that's that has been on the championship team for quite some time. So I don't know if it's the fault of the coaching or the players, but comparing the two, we had the leadership that was already built in that helped us as opposed to what they have now. So built-in leadership, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you on that one. There was people ahead of us that kept us in line, that told us what yep, to do. The Unity Council. How to do it. <laughs> right. Your, your position people that was yep. ahead of you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So we had people that was good. So one of the things I, I, I told you, I go back and I watch a lot of old film. Yeah. <laughs> it don't seem like it's old, but it is. Um, when I watch you play, Julius, it was it was uh it was great to just turn on the film and see somebody running all over the all over the field making plays. You're kind of one of those underrated guys that played at Nebraska that should be rated right up there in the top 10 as far as linebackers ever put the pads on. Um, what can you attribute to how you, why you played at Nebraska and what have you taken what you learned at Nebraska in everyday life? Well, why I played there was, you know, they were top notch back then. They just won a national championship. Everybody feared the Huskers. Um, so, you know, you have to carry that on. And obviously when you're being recruited, they look for that to carry on that tradition. And obviously I felt like I had that. So having that and still having to prove yourself, I think that's what kept me giving that drive. And like you said, being that unsung hero, people not really taking me serious. But then when I stepped on the field, I was like, well, well damn. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we're out here. It's Purdue game. It's it's a it's almost a must win. There's Boyd Epley over there in the background. Hey, hey, hey you know what? Since we bring in Boyd, that's okay. We can bring up, Boyd in. Hey, Boyd, I want to talk to you a little bit about Julius. As far as him in the in the weight room, what type of what type of a, a character did he have in that weight room? Well, I'll tell you a little story. We had a freshman recruit come in named Christian Jackson. <laughs> Kyle Vandenbosch was his name, and he was a big shot recruit that was lifted quite a bit. And he came in the first day of the end season and asked me, Coach, uh, who should I train with? And I said, that guy right over there, his name's Julius Jackson. Because Kyle figured he'd go and show Julius a thing or two. It didn't work that way. It didn't work that way. Julius Jackson was a stud. Well, I mean, and Julius, I, I mean, that's what I remember, you being one of the most hardworking persons, not only on the football field, but also in the weight room. I mean, I look at you now, 
we we would love to see you. You know, I'm quite sure you can plug a couple of holes for for maybe a series or two. Right, right. You know right. what I mean? Look but at those shoulders. he's still looking oh, yeah. like he can play. You know, so. Uh, I think uh, we're going to move him to guard, though. No, no. How how how, how, how important how important was the strength staff? How important was the but was Husker power when you were at Nebraska? Well, as you know, being there as well, that was Nebraska. You know what I mean? Those going in early, the training day, you know, not going anywhere for spring break. Um, I mean, that's where the power is. That's what we. That's what kept us going throughout that last fourth quarter. So obviously, you need to keep that going. That that's a part of just that strength to keep it up. And we outdid everybody. So <laughs> you got a prediction on the game today? I don't want to say. You got a prediction on the game today, boy? <laughs> we both predict the win today okay. against Purdue. Yes. We predict the win today against yes. Purdue. Boyd Epley signing off. The greatest strip coach in the Ever. history of strip coach. <laughs> yeah. You know, they still like. Squat, boy, where are you squatting now? I did 405 on my 74th birthday. 74 years old, 405. Yeah. Now, boy, was I look though. at a lot of my former players, like this guy, yeah. and we still have in our 40s. Julius, 43, 44, 45, what? Somewhere in there. Forget it. <laughs> 35, right? I don't know. I'm 46. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Boy just told you he was 74. <laughs> what was it? Was it something in the water? Was it the creatine? What was the it that mo that most people, <laughs> most people that work under you are still in good shape? Not everyone is, of course. Everybody There's is. a lot of us. <laughs> we had a work ethic to die for, and the, the, the players themselves did the work. Of course, we just kind of showed them the direction, and it was a consistent effort. Not just during the season, but in the winter and the summer. We created year-round training in Nebraska. And it added up to very successful programs. Well, boy, we want to definitely thank you. I know I do, Julius, as well. Because uh, I don't think we would have got on the field if we wouldn't have hit it hard in the weight room, if we wouldn't have got after it. And you saw some improvement in us in, in order to say, okay, Vershawn's working a little bit harder than he did as a, as a sophomore. So, you know, when I had lifter of the year my junior year, it was only because I worked hard for the first time and actually put some effort well, behind one it. One of the things that we did, uh, with Mike Arthur's help, who was my top assistant for many, many years, we created an index that's based on your body weight so that we could compare how you were doing. You know, if a guy jumped 28 inches in the vertical jump, you don't know whether that's good or bad. But if you weighed 200 pounds or whether you weighed 300 pounds and jumped 28 inches, that's a pretty big difference. Sure. So the index was a, allowed us to compare an athlete apples to apples. And uh, Zach Duvall uses that index today. So we're looking for some good progress in the current program. Boy, obviously you working out still today, but uh, what are you doing these days? I'm retired from Nebraska, but I'm a consultant for several companies, and I'm also helping the Nebraska Greats Foundation, which was founded by Jerry Murtaugh, my, my first All-American on defense, and uh, uh, Bob Newton was the first All-American on offense. Yeah. So Jerry is doing a really good thing helping the Nebraska colleges. And in my first year as a retiree from the university, I have visited all of the other universities and colleges in the state of Nebraska, met with their ADs and their strength coaches. Because if there's any athlete out there that can't, that's a letterman, they can't afford to pay their medical bills, that foundation is there to help. Wow, that's huge. I hope you guys are listening. So, uh, appreciate you, boy. We're going to end it with... Uh, with Mr. Julius Jackson, my last name's sake. Uh, Julius, leave us with whatever you want to leave us with. Um, you got the floor. Dear Lord in the balance, we go through life. Dear Lord in the balance, we go through life. We have a chance to spare. We have a chance to spare. A chance to equal all your strikes. A chance to equal all your strikes. A chance to do it a dare. A chance to do it a dare. If we should win, if we should win. We stand by the code. We stand by the code. My bad. If we should lose, and we should lose, we stand by the code. <laughs> and cheers to winners go by. Cheers to winners go by. But day by day, day by day, we're getting better and better. Get better and better. Team KBB. Team that can't be beat. Won't be beat. I like Happy that. Red. Go big red, baby.